Now it's time for It's Barely News. And just to be clear, if anybody is thinking, well, it's only about the half hour, uh, are we going to have an early night tonight? No, because you and I have a rant. We have a rant. So stay tuned for the rant. We'll go through It's Barely News. And uh, and then we'll rant for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, So it's barely news. First up, we've got an update uh, from the FAA. We've got a new NPRM. It's not nearly as big as the remote ID NPRM, but it is information that uh, some people might be interested in. Basically, um, basically how it's going to work is they've got an NPRM that changes the air carry definition so they can include powered lift, which is essentially like VTOL, EVTOL, Uh, basically what would be like rotorcraft, you know, um, Mm -hmm. or anything like that, to fly airlines, charters, and air tours. So we talked before about Boeing's plan to, you know, kind of taxi people around in in these uh, air carriers, you know, as taxis, that sort of thing. And this basically Mm -hmm. lays out rules for that um, or proposed rules for that um, to kind of better define that bracket. Um, I've been through some of this, but this is a huge document. I haven't reviewed all of it yet, so I don't know necessarily where I land on it. Um, or exactly how over, you know, like where it stands as far as overreach and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't think it's going to directly affect very many hobbyists, though. Probably should we, not. No. Should we be commenting on this? Do we care? Uh, it depends on where the definitions land, I would say. If there's mm-hmm. no, like, reason that it interacts with any of our laws, then no. Probably not. Okay. But it, it will just depend, you know. All right. All right. Well, that's why it's barely news. Uh, next up, uh, a story about the Pyrodrone gimbals. Uh, Pyrodrone coming out with custom gimbals for the Tango 2 and the Mambo. And some people were wondering, well, wait a minute. Is this like official? Is Pyrodrone? What's going on? Everybody's always looking for drama, Blunty. Everybody's always like, oh, is someone getting stabbed in the back? I need to be angry about it. That's true. And unfortunately for those people, it turns out it's all legit and above board. <laughs> yes, uh, Pyrodrone has been uh, has partnered with TBS to release their gimbals that we talked about last week, so they are official. Okay, that's nice. Going to be some uh, nice to be able to get upgraded gimbals. Is our take uh, for sure? Yep. Um, another thing people are really uh, hair trigger about is Chinese. Chinese drones uh, and spying and things. Is that what we got for this story, Blunty? Uh, or is... Kind of. Uh, basically, uh, this is a report um, that's basically making its headlines all over the news, the mainstream news. I think people are kind of spreading this everywhere, essentially. Um, but basically, um, Congress basically put out a report uh, that said... I don't know. I'm trying to think of how to summarize this properly. Um, well, first of all, they're just bunch... they're just DJI drones. So Correct. to say Chinese made drones, I mean, lots of things are made in China. Well, they could have said DJI drones. But yeah, con- it, continue. I was going to say that's basically the case. It's like a bunch of people were flying drones in areas that could be, you know, uh, subject to you know, security concerns if people saw pictures or something, Mm -hmm. right? And they're concerned because you can use these drones that are Chinese-made, you know, the DJI drones that they're saying, Mm -hmm. and put an NFZ hack on them and fly them over somewhere that's a security place, and then, hey, you're going to, then you're going to have information. So the situation here is there are drones flying in geofenced areas that you shouldn't be able to fly into, but as we yeah. know, it's entirely possible to hack the drone to get around the geofencing. And then we've got a number, hundreds of drones in the past few months. And it's unclear whether this is a, a sort of a concerted attack of some kind or whether it is just that's how many dumbasses there are with drones in the Washington area who have figured out. It seems like hundreds of drones. It seems like the number of people who can break geofencing or who want to break geofencing is not enough that there would be hundreds of drones flying around the DC area. It does seem well, a little I, suspicious. I would say the difference is, uh, what is it called when you like, 
survivor bias or whatever almost is what's happening mm-hmm. here. Because if you're in an area with more geofencing, you're probably more likely to break geofencing. And DC is heavily That's geofenced. true. Right? You really can't fly effing anywhere in DC, actually. I remember yeah. from the protest, I met some of the local people yeah. there, and they were like, there's nowhere to fly. You got to like go to Virginia or something. So, yeah, so my guess is that you're going to have a higher percentage of people who would be interested in those kind of hacks because there's literally so few places to fly in that area. Interesting. So yeah. it's really unclear whether this is some kind of concerted attack or whether this is just people with drones flying them in no-fly zones. Either way, it's fine that like Congress is looking into it. I would like Congress to be aware of whether drones are flying over the White House or the Capitol. But also... It's not like there's people out there who are going to be like, see, the Chinese are screwing us again. And I think this story does not support that narrative. Yeah. So that's my take. All right. Anyway. All right. Uh, well, from the Chinese to the British. Uh, no, we can no. miss one there. So we Whoops, got, I skipped we one. Actually, Damn. Uh, I just wanted a good segue, Valenti. <laughs> okay. So real quick, we want to talk about humans versus AI drone racing. So we've talked about these stories before. University of Zurich has been doing these tests uh, for a while with uh, Thomas Bitmata and a couple other pilots. Um, and we want to give you an update here, basically. Um, well, last time we gave you an update was about three or four days before Thomas Bitmata made a uh, summary video. Uh, it's an 18-minute video there, AI versus human drone race, and kind of summarizes better what happened at that point. But he mm-hmm. actually released another video, a new video, um, which is shows the AI and how the AI learns the track and ex- basically uh, like finds its way through based on the systems and, and what's actually happening on board. Um, so I thought this was pretty neat, and I wanted to let people know uh, this this is here. So. Yeah, we'll show just a little bit of it. There's Mr. Mr. Bidmata himself. Uh, beautiful quad. We got some slow mo. I see. We're gonna. I want to see the. I want to see the AI doing the AI things. Yeah, here, here we go. The AI tries to figure out the optimal route through the, through the gates. And uh, if you guys haven't seen this before, geez. Uh, it is, it is shocking how fast the, the AI flew this course. Like, I think Vanover was there as well. I think they raced Bidamata, Vanover and others against the human, against the computer. The, the lines this computer was taking were unreal. And, and like, in the same way that you watch somebody like Vanover or Minchan, et cetera, fly and you're like, that's inhuman. How do they do that? This was like that step forward again and right. it was it was crazy yeah one of the things we discussed last time was uh and really if you think about it humans are doing the computation from off the quad as well but mm-hmm. uh you know we talked about how a lot of this is basically using external video sensors and then mm-hmm. using those to um to do external computing and then tell the quad where to go versus they're also doing tests where you have most of the stuff on board and the video is all on board so mm-hmm. We just want to see that. I want to see one flight attempt. So here's the drone. Here, let's turn the audio on. Hopefully is this, this where one. the control inputs are coming from? So here we have a standard uh, TBS tracer. Yep. Uh, TX. Oh, well, there's your first problem. basically um, now sending the control commands to yep. the roll pigeon from the computer. That's slick. So it's bound. Love that there little 3D print. Okay, I will arm now. So this is completely controlled by this the is AI. Scary, yes. This is so scary. Yeah. <laughs> They've never done this before. This is under an hour, and it's going to launch. Jesus Christ! That blows me away. Oh my! Oh my God! Every time, oh, right to the ground. Woo! Total payoff. That was <laughs> insane. Freaking insane. Yeah. Insane. Crazy stuff. Crazy okay, stuff. I wanted that moment for the audience who hadn't seen it before. Um, all right, well, from a, uh, a, a, a guy from New Zealand who races drones to a British drone who, I don't know, This I had such a good segue. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> What's oh, we, right. we got British drones, a giant British multi rotor evacuating somebody. The Malloy T four hundred. Uh, the scale of this thing is inconceivable, Blunty. Like it looks like it's just a little multi rotor, but it's carrying a human. It's going to turn out to be a tiny model. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, yeah, they're they're carrying humans. Uh. No, it's basically full size. So yeah, yeah. they're testing evacuation. We just want to let you know. Yeah, they're testing evacuation of people, like we talked about with search and rescue before. Um, but yeah, with the whole drone basically taking somebody in. So yeah, kind of. A lot of people are going to ask, why is this better than a helicopter? We've talked about that before with the air taxis. You know, these are mechanically easier to maintain and simpler. Have a little more redundancy than a helicopter. Yeah, uh, no pilot at risk. Uh, different, a lot of different factors. So yeah. They're very cool. Um, appeals court sides with drone enthusiasts who challenged Ottawa County ban. What's going on here? Yeah, so this is, if you've been following these kind of drone uh, lawsuits for a while, this one's been going on for a while. Um, but finally, um, an appellate court has affirmed basically that uh, basically Ottawa County in Michigan uh, exceeded its authority. They tried to ban drones, basically whole hog, and uh, they said no, that's not okay. And uh, basically, the drone users won the lawsuit, or won the basically won the appeal. And, uh, and yeah, they weren't allowed to make the rule. One of the differences here, you know, we see a lot of cases where states try to make local municipalities or states trying to make rules that they aren't allowed to make because of the FAA. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll say here is, from what I can tell, this was not using any of the FAA stuff. This was basically using a state law that said this wasn't legal. Mm -hmm. um, so while it is good for drone users in Michigan, especially Ottawa County, it may not be like a, it's not like an FAA precedent from what I can tell. It's That's like a, a shame. local law drone rules precedent. So Yeah. I love that the appeal, I love, it looks like from reading the decision, uh, as quoted here in this article, that Ottawa County lost and then appealed. And when you right. appeal, you're supposed to point to some flaw in that in the previous court's decision-making that the appeals court can rectify. But it sounds like they just went, nah, -uh. let right. us, we, we appeal. I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> I appeal. <laughs> and then like, you just get to roll the dice again and maybe the court will change its mind. And the court was like, yeah, no, that's not how it works. You lost. Yeah. You still lose. The, Goodbye. The court does not like when you do that, especially for the lawyers who filed that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's going on with but lawyers? Yeah. Shouldn't they know they're not, shouldn't they know they can't do that? <laughs> yeah. Depends on, yeah, there's a lot of them out there who are happy to do stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, uh, we got one more. Yeah, last up, and it's barely news. Before we uh, get to the rant. Yeah, we've got a drone has saved a hiker. We talk a lot about, again, these uh, search and rescue uh, options for different things. This one is no different. A drone has saved a, uh, a hiker in distress. Um, basically, they found the hiker with an aerial drone. So we just wanted mm -hmm. to let you know that uh, yet another person was found uh, who was stranded on a walking trail. Um, yeah, who was able to be found by drone. How did you, get, how did you, I mean, I, I don't know how many details are available. How did the hiker get stranded on a walking trail? How'd that go? I think it's pretty common, to be honest with you. Like, if you have a medical emergency, if you're on the back of the trail, oh, like, yeah, okay. nobody can come find you, you know? Uh, yeah, like, okay. I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, very cool. 